Hey, Nick here. I uh, got my 62 shop manual out. I'm working on a 62 convertible. Uh, he's got some brake issues. He When he drove it here, it locked up, kept locking up on him. Uh, the master, the uh, brake booster's bad. Uh, and the adjustment, the rod adjustment was bad, but it still continued to lock up. The brakes overheated, had a few issues. I'm looking at the brakes, checking things out. First thing I want to do is uh, measure the inside diameter of the drums. Well, first thing I did, of course, was take the wheels off, took the drums off, inspected the brakes. Uh, they're very dirty and dusty, but I didn't see uh, anything immediately wrong. But I'm going to look at the specifications. 62 manual, section 8, brakes and suspension right here dimensions drum inside diameter front rear 11.030 I'm gonna take my trusty brake inside diameter micrometer or whatever you want to call it how you adjust these is uh, let me zoom in And I have no light. Right here it says 11. Where are we? <laughs> right there it says 11. Right? Set this at 11. It'll go and it'll rest into the groove. Oops, other side. 11 right there see undo it set it at 11 sorry it's I'm having trouble keeping this because uh, I have it on magnification keeping it in the frame so we 11 11 okay got it set at 11 let me go back out Got my micrometer set at 11 inside inside micrometer. This is a um, Amco 8500 brake caliper, brake micrometer, whatever. Uh, let's go over to the drum, okay. Here's one of the rears. Put this inside. You, you never want it to let it go out fast. Like if you, if I flicked it, you never, you never want to do that. You want to take care of these are expensive tools. You want to take care of them. So you never, so you put this in first, that side in first, then you put this in. Okay, the, the farthest it is right there, right there. 11 and 030. I don't know if you guys can see that or not. Okay, here we go. See? 11030. Okay, it's right on the limit. It's right on its maximum. That's okay. That one's good. So I'm going to take this out like this not let it flick okay here's a front drum sounded like i dropped it but i didn't it just kind of rolled okay these are 11030 as well oh look at that <laughs> oh my god it doesn't even fit in there let me make sure it's set check your setting again it's at 11 it was a little bit loose. It really loosened up. Come on. That made a little bit of a difference, but... Oh, look at that. It's at 11110. So it's uh, uh, 70 thousandths over 
It's 70,000 too wide inside. So these drums, these drums are history, but the customer, the customer asked me not to um, do the brakes. I have to clean them. I told they were, they were, I thought they were burned. After he drove it here, one of the rear brakes and one of the front brakes was smoking. You can see the grease got so hot it started melting and dripped down. And you can see it in the drum right here. See it in the drum, dripping on the drum. And you can see burn, the drum overheated. You can see the burn marks. But it's not a score. It's just a burn. It's a, it's a burn mark. So this has to be sanded. I'll sand it by hand. Clean it and sand it by hand. Uh, it's pretty dirty, you know, dusty like all brakes are. This all needs to be cleaned. These are not self-adjusters. These are manual adjusters. Typical on 62. Uh, it's correct. It should be held with, each shoe should be held with two uh, nails and springs, retainers, to hold it to the backing plate. Each side has two. That is correct. You want to check to see if they're leaking, so you pull, oh yeah, look at that. They're leaking. Wheel cylinders are leaking, so you pull the cups back to check for leaks. Yep, wheel cylinders are leaking. Okay. That's the left front. Okay, let's go to the right rear. Okay, uh, this one's, these shoes are also held on with two nails. In the rear, you don't have to have two nails. You can only, you only have to have one and that's okay. It's manual adjuster. It's got a manual adjuster with a self-adjusting star. That's not a manual star, that's a self-adjusting star. So it's got the wrong, somebody changed that. Uh, let's uh, check the, uh, see if it's leaking. Oh man, I, got, I need a screwdriver. Okay, I need a screwdriver. Let me pull this back with a screwdriver. Okay, yeah, they're leaking too. Oh yeah, they're all corroded inside. They're leaking. Look at that, you can see it on the, yeah. Get that out of the way. It's not as bad as the front, but they're, they're all corroded. Yeah, okay. That was the, uh, Left rear, here's the right rear. That spring is still good. See the self adjuster, how it's different? I'm sorry, the manual adjuster, how it's different from the self adjuster. Manual adjuster has uh, big, huge knobs and there's much less of them. Whereas the self adjuster has little tiny knobs for the self adjusting lever. Oh yeah, look at that. It's just pouring out, look at that. See, no good. Okay, no good. The hydraulic system's history, no good, okay. Let's go to the um, right front. Okay, now we're at the right front, so now you can see how badly it was burned. This was the one that was smoking. I can tell you right now, it ruined the spring. It's got a manual adjusting star, which it's supposed to have. Uh, look at how all the grease melted from the heat. It's just pooled up in there. This has to be cleaned. This has to be replaced, probably. These are, who knows? See, the problem is, is when you overheat your brakes, you ruin all the springs. All the springs are bad. So now, let's talk about the shoes and the wear. So... I think you guys can see this. It's shiny on the outside here and here and not as shiny there, which tells me it's not hitting. The center is 
strongly as it's hitting the outside, but it's still hitting. Now what you wanna look for when you're checking the shoes, what you wanna look for is you wanna make sure it's wearing in the center, which this is. If you pull your drum off and you see wear here and wear down here and nowhere in the center, that's gonna tell you that your drum could be out of round, out of uh, um, specs. It's inside diameter, it's too large possibly, but more importantly, the shoe is at the wrong arch. In other words, the shoe has less of an arch than the inside of the drum, which would cause this to not wear in the center. Uh, I do see that. Or you can get a shoe where it's got wear here, but nothing down here. Once again, uh, the, the, the specs on the drum could be wrong. The arch of the shoe could be wrong. It could be installed improperly. You could have the wrong shoe. Look at this one. It's hardly wearing on the inside at all. You can see that. It's got almost no, it's not wearing there. It's wearing on the, from here over. And it changes as it goes down. It changes. See, it's wearing down there and not up there. It's like the shoe is kind of bent. The problem today with shoes is that they come pre-arched. How could they possibly know what your inside diameter of your drum is? How could they possibly know? They can't. So you have to check that by putting the shoe in the drum. Fat panda, dun, dun, dun. Hey, kitty. Hi. Hi, kitty. Hi, buddy. Um, before you install the shoes, you put them in the drum and you rock them back and forth. And what you want to look for is you want to look for the shoe touching in the middle and not touching on the tips. Right here where the pad is. But you want it to be touching in the middle. The shoe should rock inside the drum. You hold it. I'll show you that later. You hold it in and you rock it. If it doesn't rock, something's wrong. So you can see this needs a lot of work. This particular break... This was caused because of the drum, the master, the, the booster, sorry. <laughs> this was caused because of the, a faulty brake booster. Okay, so this is the right front. And uh, this is the one that was smoking real bad when he came here. And uh, you can see what happened here. It burned the, the oil onto this adjusting star you know it ruined the spring. Uh, it's so hot, it melted all the grease and it went dripping down. Um, but it didn't ruin the shoes. I don't see any damage to the shoes. Uh, you know, the, uh, the wear pattern is there. They're wearing from top to bottom. It's weird how Right along here, it doesn't look like it's wearing like the rest of it, but can't do anything about that really. You can't arch them anymore and you gotta use them the way that they come. And this one, this one's wearing too. It's got wear from the top all the way down to the bottom. Maybe not so much in the middle here, sorry. Maybe not so much in the middle, but it's still wearing there, but not like this here and here. But it's wearing from, from the top to the bottom. Again, what you want to watch out for is if the shoe were only wearing here and not here, or the opposite of that, something's wrong. If the shoe is only wearing here, maybe between these rivets and not up here and not down there, something's wrong. If the shoe's only wearing on one side and not the other, something's wrong. If it's wearing here and not here and wearing here 
and not there like the shoe is twisted obviously something's wrong so you have to look for that it's obvious generally it's obvious uh, when you see that happen so I'm gonna clean this uh, take my turkey baster you look for other things that are out of place the fronts are supposed to have two on each two uh, hold downs on each shoe two on each shoe this one has that on the backs they only need one on each shoe that's normal from the factory they only used one now this car this particular car had two on the backs as well not gonna hurt anything it's an overkill doesn't matter uh, uh, the one on the left rear wheel had a self adjuster star on it. This is a non self adjuster star where they're the big teeth, the big nubs, they're bigger and less, less of them. Where the uh, self adjusting stars have much smaller teeth and they're many. Um, the return springs, everything's in, in its correct place. The, return spring down here is correct this is pretty simple when they don't have self adjusters it's pretty simple this is not hard the smaller shoe goes on the front the larger shoe the metal part of the shoe is the same size it's the pad that's larger or smaller so the smaller one in the front larger one in the back turkey base this thing It's pretty, uh, it's pretty dirty because all the grease melted out. So what happened was uh, the brake booster, now the brake booster was applying itself, causing the brakes to engage. The right front obviously was, uh, obviously it's adjusted tighter on the right front than it was on the left front. So it engaged first. Um, normally when a brake booster does that, it's the rod between the booster and the master that's out of adjustment. What I did was before he took off, he was having this, he was having this problem before. When I went to pick it up, he had, his brakes had already locked up. So at his house, I adjusted the rod shorter, and that helped. But by the time he came to my house, it was locking up again. So I'm thinking that the booster is bad, and that the booster... Uh, something internally is wrong, causing it to apply the brakes. I could be wrong, maybe... They're usually not that sensitive. You know, once you back off the the rod between the booster and the master, once you back it off, it's 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 good. They don't expand that much, but this did. So that's a clue to me. That's a clue that something's internally wrong with the booster, and it looks new. So. I don't know. Take some brake clean. This all has to be washed before. Now we already determined that the wheel cylinders are leaking. We know the wheel cylinders are leaking. Okay, let's pull that apart. Let me get a let me get a towel. I take everything apart. I let it fall into the pan, and then I take it out and put it on a towel on the hoist arm, so I know what parts go with which wheel. 
Now I'm going to replace these springs. I'm going to replace this spring. Uh, the shoes are going to keep. I'm going to replace the hold down kits. The shoes and the drums I'm going to keep. I don't see anything wrong with those. You know, we know the drums are beyond their turning limits, but they're working with the shoes. The car stops okay otherwise, I think. I really didn't get to test drive it when there was absolutely nothing wrong with it, but I'm going by what the customer said, and he said that it was driving okay until that problem, it was braking okay until that problem happened. Oh, this thing is baked. Oh, it's all, yeah, it's, it's bent because it got heated. Yeah, this thing's history. That's history. Yeah, these got no more tension on them either. You know, they're so cheap. You do a brake job, replace this crap. Why put it back on? You've got it off the car. Why put it back on the car? Come out of there. That's not coming out. Interesting. Something's wrong with that hole. Huh. I've never had that happen before. There we go. That was weird. Wouldn't come out of the hole. And the hole is buggered. Huh. Okay. That one too, doing the same thing. There we go. Okay, good. Okay. Man, these shoes are dirty. Ooh, wow. Dirty. When I put them back on, I'll, I'll spray them with brake clean. That'll get all the dirt and oil off of them. And then I'll sand them with sandpaper, you know, like 80 grit or 100 grit, something like that. The uh, adjusting star, that has to come completely apart. It has to be cleaned and re-greased lightly. Uh, the problem with greasing adjusting stars is that, and I, I mean really lightly because dirt will stay on it and then it'll gum it up. So you don't, you don't even have to really, if you clean them enough, and they're very, and they're loose and they thread in easily. You probably don't really have to uh, grease them because the problem with grease is it it makes the dirt stick. That's the problem with grease. Now. Obviously the best way to clean these is to take them off. That's by far the best way to clean them. Just remove them completely and then clean them in the solvent tank. But I'm not doing that. Oh, forgot these. And uh, 
the last two restorations I did, I had them powder coated. That's the way they are in the beginning. That's where they are from the factory. Now his brake lines, I'm gonna blow his brake lines out, get all the old fluid out of there. Get that, I have one of those metal toothbrushes somewhere. Here it is. The, uh, the this cleaning solvent likes to stay down there in that little trough there. I can feel there's a bunch of grease in there. You can see it. Usually it leaks, this is a piece of metal that's been tack welded to this. This thing is, usually it leaks through there. This is, both sides are not leaking, man. They're not, uh, not coming out. See if I can uh, get some of that out of there. Some of that old grease and, and uh, okay, here we go, yeah. Gotta check this surface. This is where the seal rides. Check this surface, make sure it's not frayed somehow or scratched badly. Actually, the bearing rides here. The seal rides up here. Yeah, that's good. Don't ever forget, don't forget to grease the seal, the inner wheel, wheel bearing seal before you put them on. Now, these, the pads, these are always bad, usually. They've got grooves in them. I surface these with a uh, disc sander, little small discs, you know, sanding disc or, or Scotch-Brite pads. I'm out of Scotch-Brite pads. I had to order more today. So, okay, look at that. All right, that's pretty clean, man. Came out nice. So, I'll clean what I'm gonna reuse. Most of this I'm not gonna reuse. I'm gonna reuse the star and a couple other pieces, the, the little pistons. I'm gonna change these. These are history, look at this. This one, you can see it. It's been leaking, this one's not so bad, but some of the others, it's pouring out. This one's not so bad. It's got some dirt and rust in there. These are old. I don't think these have been changed in a while. Yeah. So I'm cleaning everything. I'm doing the brakes on that 62 still. I'm cleaning everything. And uh, one of the things that I wanted to show you guys is this little plastic grommet that I can't take off because of my big fat chubby fingers. Here, see, so you clean this area around here. I did it on the wire wheel over here. Uh, and then I clean the, it's a plastic grommet. See, it's plastic. These are factory. That goes there. And then the brake shoe goes on top. So this is like an insulating pad between the two. So they move smoothly. Uh, the, the, the adjusting star, this is the, this car, remember, on the driver's left rear, it had a self-adjusting adjusting star, not a manual adjusting star. Well, it turns out I don't have any. I thought I did. I had three boxes full of adjusting stars, and uh, all of them, except four, are self-adjusting stars, and the four that I have are too long. I don't know what they're off of. Could be a square bird. Anyway, you know, the only difference is this. So who cares? That's the only difference. So this is what he, this is, he's going to get the same thing that came off the car. 
Okay, now you have to clean these thoroughly. Uh, his is seized. This is seized shut. It will not turn. Also, it's the wrong side. I'll explain that. Adjusting stars have a right and a left. The rights only go on the right and the left only goes on the left because of the way that you adjust them. Anyway, you want to clean all this. You want to clean these completely thoroughly. Inside the tube here, clean the threads. Now, if you put oil on them, if you put grease, I used to grease these. The problem with that, it's okay to grease them, but the problem with it is brake dust will stick to the grease and ultimately it'll be like sandpaper. I did put a little bit of oil on both sides, this side and the, and the threads here. I put a little bit of oil, see? Uh, but if the, you know, when the brake dust hits it, it sticks and there's nothing you can do. But anyway, I decided to put a little dab will do ya. These little washers, they used to, they go on here. They're always missing. This car had one. They go on here and then the cap goes on like that. There's only one on this car. Come on. <laughs> well, I guess it's staying on there. Too bad. Uh, this car only had one. The others didn't have any. It doesn't matter if you leave them off. It's not going to hurt anything. So, and then these are the um, pistons. These are the push rods for the uh, wheel cylinders. You have to clean these. I cleaned them on the wire wheel. Okay, you have to clean them thoroughly. They're pitted. Doesn't matter. You know, I grease them with white lithium and then I stick them into the wheel cylinder. Clean them both thoroughly on the wire wheel. Get all the dirt and rust off of them. Grease them up good. Okay. So I got the, all the parts cleaned up. I got the backing bait plate clean. I'm going to change the wheel cylinders. I haven't done that yet. But I wanted to show you guys how to surface these pads. This is where the brake shoe rides. The brake shoe rides on these pads like this. Okay. Brake shoe goes back and forth. Rides on those pads and then it and then it uh, makes a groove. Let me get something to point with. The brake shoe rides on these pads and then makes a groove here, kind of a W-shaped groove. This one's the biggest one because this is the most movement. The most movement of the shoe is down at the bottom. The top is stationary pretty much, so these don't wear out. There's a, there's a, there's a groove here, but this one's pretty bad. This one... That's weird. Actually, the top, the top one here is the worst. This one on this side. See? See the groove? See, you can see it. You can see the wear marks. This one, you can see it. Kind of a W-shaped groove. See that one? Kind of goes up and then down again. Hard to get a good angle on these. A good lighting angle to... <laughs> there. You can really see it. So you got to flatten those. You got to flatten those grooves. You got to surface them. So how I surface them is I take my disc sander, pneumatic disc sander. And I let me see if I can move this table a little bit. Okay.
See? Nice and flat. I took very little off, just enough to make it clean. Now, the ones that have a groove, they're going to be a little harder to do because you got to take more material off. Let's do this one. Now, what I'm doing, I can still feel a little bit of an indent here. I might take a little bit more off over here. I'm not trying to grind all the metal down so it's perfectly flat to the bottom of the groove. What I'm trying to do is remove the edges so the shoe doesn't get stuck on the edges of the groove. I still want it to move back and forth. Much better. Yeah, see, that's good. I can still feel a little tiny groove, a little bit of a depression, but the shoe's not going to get stuck on it. Okay. See, you can see the, you can see where the groove was, that dark spot right here. And here, that's where it is too. So the groove went like that. This one's pretty deep right here. This is smooth now, but this is pretty deep. There's still a depression, but no sharp edges, no tall edges, no place for the shoe to get stuck on. Taking off the uh, wheel cylinder. Let's clean this off a little bit. I don't want to clean the, the whole backing plate, but I do want to clean off around the, the hose, the brake line where it goes into the master's, into the wheel cylinder. Sorry. Okay. Okay. Three eighths. three-eighths tubing wrench. You're going to use this end. Okay, we're not Chevy mechanics. Okay. Use the right tools. Okay. All right. Always, always, always use tubing wrenches for tubes. Steel tubes, steel lines, fittings, use tubing wrenches. Taking them off and putting them on. I run across stripped fittings all the time, or they're not square. They're flattened because somebody used a wrench. It's really unprofessional. Sorry, but it's the truth. Okay, there we go. Okay, that's off. Now I want to get that out of the way. I want to bend this up a little bit. Okay. Get it out of the way because I don't want dirt going in it when I take these off. <laughs> half inch, three eighths. These are half inch. The, the line, the fitting on the tube is three eighths. Okay. I got fluid all over me. Junk. Look at that. Look at it pour out. It's just leaking like a sieve. Look at that, all rusty. You can see it. <laughs> Trying to keep it in the frame. Look at how all, all rusty that is. See? Junk. Take the new one, match them up, right? Look the same, okay? Same diameter, I think, I hope. That one has a bigger piston. I mean, that one has a bigger boot. So it looks bigger, but it's the same size. Get this out of the way. 
same length. This one wraps over it. This one, it goes to the end. Fluid's going everywhere. This has a different boot on it completely. So one of the things you want to do to test these, push them in. Okay, it's coming back. It's supposed to do that. Make sure they do that. Okay. Oops. Springs back, yeah. Yeah, okay. I've gotten these with a pit, there was no piston inside. No spring, that happens. Okay, good, right? Everything good? It's got a three-eighths, it's got a three-eighths fitting. Some of them have metric. These are metric. Let's put that back on, right? Okay, good. Okay, here we go. Tighten that up. I'm using short wrenches. You don't over tighten them that way. <laughs> Not like these are gonna break. I mean, you know, you don't usually, people don't usually over tighten these is what I'm saying. Pretty stout little bolts. Okay, I over tighten everything anyway. Let's put the brakes back together. Now that we have a new wheel cylinder in there. Oh, maybe we should connect the line. No, I'm not going to do that yet. I might want to blow them out. I haven't. I really should. I just need two people. And uh, I don't have a second person here. Okay, new wheel cylinder, right? Resurface pads, everything's clean. All the other parts are clean. Got all the new hardware, clean the shoes. Uh, got some grease, got some tools. Okay, so let's put this on. The... Uh, Emergency brake lever, see, for the emergency brake. Goes on the primary shoe in the front. Pull this. <clears throat> I released the emergency brake, if I didn't mention that before. I released it fully. Okay. You have to release it fully so you can get this thing on and off. And then I'll adjust the brakes later correctly. They weren't adjusted right to begin with. I'm not going to put any grease on here. This is going to go on the shoe. Yeah, here, like that. Take the little forked clip. Doesn't want to go on all the way. Hmm. Well, here we go. All right. I take dikes, you know, snips, dikes, wire cutters, whatever you want to call them.
and I close them with that. So I'm going to do that. I need to put, reposition these a little bit. Okay, so see? There they are. Okay. Can you see that? See, I got it squished. That's as good as it, that's as far as you want to go with it. Works smoothly, right? Okay, got that on. Now we're going to grease the pads, white lithium. Now, once again, you can say, well, if you grease them, the brake dust is going to stick to it. Yeah, but it's the lesser of evils. The pad, the shoes should have some lubrication on the pads. It will eventually wear off the heat. Uh, age, the dust will get into it and <coughs> deteriorate it until it just disappears, but there's nothing you can do about that. Okay. Now, I'm going to use one nail and one hold down kit spring and everything, one hold down spring for each shoe. Oh. Getting ahead of myself. Let's put these in. Okay, I grease these. The pistons for the wheel cylinder, for the shoe. All right? I could do my Ed Sullivan impersonation, but it sucks, so I won't. With the word shoe. Really good shoe. Um, see? You made me do it. Uh, okay, now the shoe. The shoe. Now I don't even want to say the word. <laughs> Here we go. Okay. Now try not to get the grease that's on the pads all over the shoe. You don't want to do that. Stick this through. The uh, emergency brake arm is in the way. Here we go. Okay. Put one of these on first. These little uh, spring holders. Then the spring. Then what I do is I put a holder in the sp spring holder. This is going to be fun trying to do this with one hand. Hey, I did it. Look, see, put it in there. So the one on the shoe is up like that. The dome is up facing me. This one, the dome is going to be going in towards the shoe. Okay. See, so it's, you see the concave side of the retainer. So they, they're like this. When you put the spring on, they're like this. Right? And the spring is in between, see? Like that. Ah. Okay, so now... This is the equalizer lever for the emergency brake. It's got a spring on the end. This spring, I inspected it. The spring is still good. These have to be good. You have to replace them if they're bad. Good luck finding them. Okay, here is the other shoe. Grease the pads, right? Got this in there, everything's in there. I feel like I'm forgetting something, but. Okay, put the nail through. Okay. 
retainer, dome up. The dome is up. Put the spring on. Get the new retainer. Put it in the. Put it in the. Uh, oh, it flipped over. Flipped the. Flipped the other way. Or you could do this. You could do that. Little bugger. Come on, man. <laughs> if I wasn't filming, I'd be using other words. Okay. There we go. Um, <clears throat> there we go. Look, okay. Okay. That's make sure your equalizer lever is in. Okay. Good. Right. Now the bottom. So, okay. Be that way. Okay. There we go. Put this. Okay. Let's, uh, Let's put the top springs on. Let's get this on here. It goes on like that, okay? Put the top springs on. Front one goes on first. That's the way I was taught. Okay, like that. Strong little sucker, isn't it? Right here, yeah, there we go. Okay, you got a hole here, but obviously that's not gonna work, you know. Then you got a hole here, that's too far away. You know, it's that hole there, right there, see? The light is in the way. It doesn't matter. Put that back in in a second. Whoa. Wow. Okay. Whew. Now, let me lengthen this a little bit. That's all right. Okay. Make sure it's lined up with the hole, the adjusting star. Make sure it's you're putting it in right. It's lined up with the hole. You could put it in backwards and not know it if you're not paying attention. Now I'll show you a little trick with this in a second. Let's put this on. Okay. So we take our trusty brake tool, right? You hook the spring with that and you dig this into the, I'm putting it into the rivet hole and I'm gonna hook it into the hole right there like that. Well, okay, so I got a pair of pliers. I'm gonna there. Okay, it's in all the way, in all the way, right? Now you got your spring here. So up here, a good habit to get into. See how these spread? They're not coming off, but I always like to do this. Let's widen that up a little bit. I always like to do that. Just give it a little bit more of insurance that it's just not gonna pop off. They're not gonna pop off. Okay, then, so, hold downs, return springs, pistons are engaged, right? They're in the shoe. I've done that where I put it together and I missed the piston. It's not hooked onto the, it's not hooked onto the shoe, you know? It's like this, that happens. Make sure the brake equalizer lever is, make sure the brake equalizer lever is, is good. Okay, something, something is, huh, weird, okay. Adjusting star is in on both sides. Spring is in, the adjusting star adjuster is lined up with the hole, okay. Lube the pads. Okay, I always do this. Make sure everything's okay. I watch everything while I'm doing it. I'm not doing it hard. Just bumping it, you know. Okay, simple. 
These are simple brakes. They really are. Now I already checked the wear. We looked at that earlier. I would check the wear pattern. I know they're okay. I know they're arched to the drum, right? These are brand new shoes, practically. I mean, this brake job was just done and they did a crappy job. Um, anyway, it was probably a long time ago though. He doesn't put any miles on the car. Actually, yeah, this is probably a really old brake job that is still new because he doesn't ever drive the car, but over time it got all dusty and dirty and corroded. And the wheel cylinders are corroded because it just sits. So, right? Okay, we're gonna grind the inside of the brake drums later. Okay, it's the same for every brake. Front, left, right, uh, the only difference is the front doesn't have the emergency brake lever. So I'm just gonna show you this one. The other ones are exactly the same. They're done exactly the same way, okay? Okay, I had to show you this. I went to the driver's rear, went to loosen it, and it's turning the line. It's not loose on the, oh, I see what's wrong with it. The line is pushed, the line is pushed this way to the rear. So I can tap that, oh, really bad. I can see that now. I lowered the car, now I can see it better. I wanted to show you this because before you guys go and break a line, because it's stuck like this, you gotta stop and think about it. Look at it, look at it at all angles. No, that's not gonna work, let me try this, okay. All right, a little bit. Ooh, maybe, okay. Um, let me get a screwdriver. Let me get the persuader. Dun, dun, dun. <laughs> okay. Uh, I need to go. I got a steel rod that I can use. I don't want to use a screwdriver because it's got a pointy end, but I got a steel rod. See? Steel rod. Can you see that? Uh, I need to kind of hit it up. try that. Oh, I can see it's moving a little bit. Yeah. Hmm. Let me see if I can put this in here and just kind of coax it that way. Yeah. Oh, I got some out of it. Yeah. Okay. I put a crap load of BP, PB on it. And, uh, Man, you, you, when you do this, you can't just, you can't just go like that. Oh, you know, you got to just little tiny movements until you see the, see, it's not moving still. It's moving, but the, the line is coming with it. The nut is, the fitting is moving, but the line is going with it. Oh, there it is. Oh, yeah. Sometimes back and forth like that, that works it loose. It's, nah, it's not. More PB. Okay. You still on there? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, you gotta be really patient with these. Yeah. 
Yeah, that's, that one's, it's rusted on. This one's pretty bad. Ooh, hear that? It broke loose. Look at that. Okay, more PB. Loop the crap out of it. Patience, man. That's everything. Patience is everything. Patience, take your time. See, look at, can you see? Maybe my big fat chubbies are in the way. Here, see? Another reason why you use a flare wrench. That would have ruined it if I didn't. Tubing wrench, you know, line wrench, claw wrench. There's so many names for them. Okay, more PB. Get off of there, okay? At least it's not warped or deformed. Wow, I have to clean that up. I might have to pull the line off and clean that up. I mean, if it broke, you'd have to pull it off anyway, right? So, you know. And we, we've already compromised the, I mean, in other words, we've already opened the system, so there's no fluid in there now. It's all drained out on the other side. Okay. Look at that, okay. Oh yeah, I can't do that by hand. Uh, another way we could have done this, if it wasn't gonna come loose, is heat it up with a torch. We could have done that. But I was confident that it's a small fitting and they usually break loose, you usually don't have to torch them. Um, we were lucky this time. I gotta clean that up really good. I gotta pull it off, I guess. The fitting is right here, so yeah. Okay, I wanna show you guys that. Okay, I found one now, look at this. Look at this. Put them up together. Look at how much longer the other one is. Look at that, it's a quarter of an inch longer at least. At least. See at the bottom, they're even. The spring is stretched out, burnt. All the spring tension has been taken out of it. You gotta look for that. You cannot put springs back that have been heated and cooled and all the spring and stretched and all the spring tension has been removed. Can't do that. That's not a lot of not a lot of tension on that, uh, but I'm gonna, the drums are at their maximum. They're, they're, they're 70 thousandths above their maximum, so I'm gonna have to turn this out a lot so that the spring will then, this will lengthen and then the spring will be tighter. Um, that's the only one I had left. Wow, I couldn't believe it. What a godsend. Lucky, lucky, lucky. It took me 20 minutes to find it. I had to go through all my brake crap. Uh, lucky. So that's it. So I always do this. I check everything. I make sure they're, the nail is this way, the slot is this way on all of them. Make sure this is in. Make sure, make sure the pistons are engaging the shoes. The springs are on. This is centered on the stud. Big shoe in the back, small shoe in the front. Greased the pads. Uh, I don't have the seals for the wheel bearings right now. I have those on order. I should have had those in stock, but I didn't. So I'm waiting for those, so we'll do that later. Okay? 
So before I put the drum on, I blew it out with the air blower. Before I put the drum on, I sand this inside. Now this is glazed, it was overheated. This was on the right front, the one that was smoking. Uh, the drum is glazed, you can see it's glazed. And um, uh, it's not damaged though. It's got a couple little lines on it, but the, the shoe is still good, the drum is good. Uh, I'm just gonna sand it to get the glazing off, right? So what I do is I take a air tool and I take this sander, see? sand the inside of the drum see just gets the glazing off you know you can do it by hand you don't have to do it with an air tool if you don't have one just scuff it, you know? There, see? Scuffed it all. It's ready to go on. I gotta, I gotta pack the bearings. I'll show you that. I've already packed these bearings. I forgot to film that, so I'll show you how I did it. I use one of these. It's an old tool. I've had that forever, 30, 40 years. Uh, the grease that's inside here is still good. There's nothing wrong with it. I don't want to clean the whole, I don't need to clean the whole thing out. But I am going to just wipe off the race. Just to clean that up. Okay. But there's still grease inside. There always has to be. There always has to be grease inside. See how there's grease in there? I mean, you don't fill it up with grease, but there has to be grease in there. Why? Beats me. Uh. So, uh, so I'm gonna leave that in there. It's in good shape still. So the, this is the wheel bearing greasing tool. Can you see that? Or it's off screen. Okay. Yeah, let me move the camera a little bit. Okay, wheel bearing greasing tool. So, put the wheel bearing in. I've got it down, facing down. I got it facing down. I'm going to grease this. I've already greased it, but I'll show you what I did. So you push down on like this. And you see the grease start to come out. See? Maybe a little bit more. Ugh, like that. Right? Grab it. Now, if you don't have enough grease in the drum inside the hub, you can take it out of here, put it in the hub. But I'm going to put this in there like that, okay? I'm going to squish the rest of the grease around the bearing. Okay. And then I'm going to put the seal on. 62s take a 6815 seal.
Okay. Put some grease on it. Okay. Don't forget to do that. If you put this in dry, you'll ruin it immediately. Okay. Put grease all around it. I'm using a dead blow hammer that doesn't damage it. Grease around the seal, grease in the bearing. That's good. Okay. Put that back on. That's it. When checking the arch of your shoes, you take the shoe and you put it in the drum and you're looking for you want the shoe to be laying against the inside of the drum. And as it gets to the end, it gets further away from the drum. So it le from here to here, it should be sitting on the drum. And then you can, you can rock it. Now this one is not rocking at all little bit there, but it's really not rocking. And you can see here, I guess it wasn't hitting there. Here's the, here's the smaller shoe, the, the secondary shoe, that was the primary. This one rocks a little bit more. When I push on the end here, you can see it rocking a little bit. I mean, these are right, these are probably the same. So you can see where it wasn't hitting because there's dust build up here. So it wasn't hitting there. And from here to there, it wasn't hitting. On the edges it is, but all this was hitting, right? And then on this one, same thing. It, from here back, it wasn't hitting at all but the rest of it is, that's good, that's okay. This one's okay because 75% of the shoe is rubbing, is hitting. So, you know, what can you do? You can't arch them, so that's pretty good. As long as it's not up here, there's no space between the center and the drum and it's touching on the ends then you know the shoe is no good. It's not at the right arch. You'd have to get another set of shoes. But it also is gonna depend on the arch of your drum. Probably the newer the drums are, uh, the more chances of it hitting here and here and not in the center. Yeah. So that's how you check that. That's what you want to make sure. There should be some rock. You know, you should be able to rock it to some degree, okay? You should be able to rock it to some degree, and that one you can. Okay, got the drum on, packed the wheel bearings, put a new grease seal in, right? The grease, the bearings are all packed with grease. I overdo it and then put the excess grease back inside. Put the bearing on the big washer, the nut. Now, when you adjust this, when you tighten the nut, okay? All right, there it's loose, right? OK, 
Okay, right there it starts, right there is where it, when it, the nut stops. Now, that's not tight, that's just where the nut stops. So, technically it's neutral, it's not loose, it's not tight, it's neutral, right? Right there, that's where the nut stops. Now, I can go further with it, see, but you just want to get to that neutral point, okay? And I, what I do is I spin the drum and I keep going like that just to make sure I've got the neutral point right there, neutral point, okay? And then I, you have to put a preload on the bearing. You cannot leave it loose, okay? You gotta put a preload, which means there's a, there's a little bit of pressure on the bearing. It's not loose. So right there, the right loose, right there the nut stops. Not tight, but it's not loose. And then I go like that. That's the preload, okay? It's hardly anything at all. See, there it's loose, nut stops, loose, stops right there. I'm not putting any pressure on this. Okay, I'm just very lightly, I'm just very lightly doing it. Stops, preload, right there. I hardly turned it at all. Now it's got a preload on it. That's where you want it. A slight preload. Don't forget to put the cotter key in. If, you can, if I can find the <laughs> right there. Okay. Okay, top to Mr. Cotter key. Okay. Got dust all over it. Right? Put it through. Now some people go like this. Some people do that, go up, I don't. Sometimes your uh, the cup they originally came, they had a grounding strap inside, and if you put them like this, it'll destroy the grounding strap. Most don't have the grounding strap anymore, but I always just do it this, I do it this way. Show you. Come on. Do it that way. That way, there's no chance of uh, damaging that if it happens to be in there and you don't notice it. Okay. Preload, cutter key, right? Hasta la vista. Uh, okay, I'm putting the tire on. I greased all the lug studs, see? Took the grease, greased them all, right? Always do that. Always grease the lug studs. Do not reuse your old crusty lug nuts. Am I getting it? Yeah. Oh. Look at these things. Do not reuse your old lug nuts. All they do is chew up your wheel. These are probably the original lug nuts and they're in really bad shape. All of them. Do not use those. Use new lug nuts. <laughs> okay, new ones. Here's the part number. New lug nuts. You're going to use all around the, on the whole car.
I gotta get my gun. My air gun. Okay, that's what I wanted to show you. Thanks. Okay, that's it. All right, so brake adjustment. Uh, everybody does these differently, I'm sure. We all have our techniques. Um, what I like to do is I like to adjust them all the way down until the wheel stops and then back it off until the wheel is just starts to move freely. Um, and that's, a, that's not really correct. You know, just after over the years, you get a feel of it. And um, uh, sometimes it doesn't always work out that way. There's many, many times, probably more than half the times where one shoe is dragging and the other shoe is not. And you, it, you know, so then what do you do? I mean, you, you don't, you just don't get the feel you want. That happens all the time. So anyway, uh, let's just go through it. So I take my brake spoon, you know. And um, you can do it that way or this way. Probably this way is the easiest. So I'm pushing up on the star. I'm grabbing it from underneath and pushing it up. I think that's the right way. Let me see if it uh, is moving, getting longer. Yeah, it looks like it is. Oh yeah, it's starting to Now you gotta, you go in between the axle. You know, you're gonna feel the axle drag and you go that spot in between. That's when you're feeling the brakes. Take it around, go in that spot in between, in between the axle play. Now I'm gonna take it all the way down. Oh, it's dragging now, yeah. See a little bit, now it's not dragging, see? That's what happens. Now there's no self-adjuster. Yeah, it's really dragging now. There's no self-adjuster, so we don't have to worry about that. Okay, there we go, now it's locked. Okay, so let's go back. A little bit too tight. I have the emergency brake set. Sorry, didn't mean to do that. A little bit too tight. See, it's freewheeling there, freewheeling there, catching a little bit there, but it's not bad. Okay, I'm gonna keep it there. Okay. So I backed it off, what, 10, 13 times, just a couple teeth each time, uh, not too far. You know, uh, you want to make sure you're near the area where the shoes are starting to drag on the inside of the drum. You don't want to back it off so far that the pedal, you're going to have a low pedal. And if you had a low pedal, this is probably one of the reasons why is the adjustment, the brake adjustment, especially this car does not have self adjusters. So these have to be manually adjusted every, every once in a while. And uh, you can tell when that when it needs that when the pedal starts to get low. So if you're used to driving it, and you know how the pedal feels, then you can uh, determine that. Okay, last but not least, the little plug, right, that's got to go on there. Okay, this might be a little bit loose, but it's dragging there, see, so 
and you can see it's not there, but I can hear it. So yeah, maybe we'll find out. I'll do the others and then, uh, and then uh, see how it goes. All right, thanks.